Mä oon niin paniikissa, mä oon niin paniikissa kuin ihminen voi olla. Mä oon tehnyt kaikenlaisia ihmeellisiä juttuja elämässäni, mutta en oo kyllä koskaan ennen muuttanut Espanjaan neljän hevosen ja kahden koiran ja perheen kanssa. Mietin tosi paljon, että, että miten niin kuin paperin ohutta tämä elämä sitten kuitenkin on. The story of most American families begins in another country. A lot of the people in the villages couldn't read or write, so how did they pass down their stories through song and dance? Both my parents were Greek. They would have uh, parties and they would be dancing and I would sit in the corner watching them as a little kid. Many of us managed to live happily ever after without ever knowing our own backstories. Not so for a group of Greek American kids. They started a Greek folk dance festival. It caught on and eventually they were taking over a convention center for the event. So why were teenagers running the show? Being in charge of a $650,000 budget, they trust you to do that, is pretty amazing. I think it was just a really, really good experience. There was a lot of mentoring. The finished product was a management team that put on a great event. And why was it a dance competition? Even though we had competition, we cheered each other on. We need to learn how to uh, praise the one who passes us in the race. Somehow, it worked. And now the story of the festival is being told here and in Greece. Kefi, the story of FEF, the Greek Orthodox Folk Dance Festival. Bože, Zgreši smo, zaluta smo, postrada smo. Žele smo slobodu, postato smo robovi. Tražili smo visine, survani bismo na dno. Oči naše iskaše svetlost, obavi nas tama. Ima smo silu veliku, darove mnoge, umove britke, prelepa lica, glasove zvonke, kose negovane duge. Ima smo reči smele, počesto drske, manire fine, ali po najviše nosi smo rane, tuge i boli, kojih ni sami najčešće ne bismo svesni. A sve ljubavi radi, koju traži smo svuda, samo ne u tebi, samo ne u tebi. Isuse, tugo moja, Isuse, mladosti moja, jedina radosti moja, oprosti. Ti večnost u snu i spavanju. Welcome. Hi. Welcome, Pati Testerman. Hello, thank you. Um, hello, Svetlana, Cemin, Joy Floros, and Melina Holberg. Hello, hello. Hi. If you can unmute and open your video and start your video, it will be nice. Uh, so we are in uh, Inspire TV Live Talks. So uh, we are in the 11th British International Film Festival. Uh, the 11th version goes online. So we have some wonderful days. The uh, ladies with us today to speak about uh, their films. Uh, Patty, I thought in the beginning, uh, before, uh, before I talk uh, about that, that uh, you have all of you, you have something in common uh, about Greece, apart from the participation in the Greek International Film Festival. Um, some of you uh, have origin or uh, uh, you have some of you have houses also in Greece, and uh, Patty, you are a director of a 
of a Greek of an American film that uh, describes uh, Greek tradition and uh, habits and customs from uh, Greek people who live uh, in uh, America and not only. So how you are related with the Greek community in the United States, but well, I'm related to them now, but before making the film, I wasn't. I'm a, a copywriter and an art director, and a friend of mine, Nancy Hendrickson, was writing a book about FDF, which is the folk dance festival that the film is about. And um, I was talking to her and Peter Priobolos, who's a producer, and I thought, it sounds like a documentary because it's dancing and we're going to interview people. So Peter agreed and... Um, we just went from there. We ended up interviewing more than 40 people because people were so extremely passionate about this program. And to me, it was amazing that this was going on in Southern California, especially, which has a very small percentage of, of Greeks. And uh, it, it's huge here. It, I mean, it, and it's still thriving after 40 some years. So um, that's how I got involved. And it's been seven years in the making. So now I, I feel like I'm an honorary Greek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, now there is an explanation because uh, you are not uh, of, you, you are not related to Greek. I mean, uh, of origin or uh, something like that. And uh, you have another, a different point of view. So you documented uh, all this uh, community and their festivities uh, with um, with a, with an eye with as a person that uh, um, is neutral. So we like this uh, very much. We like uh, what uh, how you present uh, the story and uh, in the film, and also it is very interesting that. Uh, I don't know if it is your idea or um, the Greek festival's idea uh, that they invite also other cultures, other um, dance groups uh, from other uh, nations and uh, participate and they mingle together. Yes, that, that was actually, I think uh, Peter who he's a producer but he also founded FDF back in 1976 and from the very beginning, he hoped that, um, well, after he got FDF started, he hoped that other cultures would do something similar because these dances and, and music, they're getting lost around the world. And um, so he brought a group from Alaska that did their native Alaskan dances. He, um, there were groups from Australia, Brazil, and, I remember seeing a film from Czechoslovakia where they were doing a type of Greek dance, but of course it was it was their own culture. So that that's always been one of his goals was to, and he hopes that the documentary actually inspires other groups to do something similar where they, um, you know, talk about their culture and and actually he hopes that they try to preserve it in the way that FDF and the Greek Orthodox Church are doing. Yeah. What is your background as a filmmaker? What uh, other uh, film works uh, have you done? I've actually, my, my background is actually in commercial videography. I've um, written, um, written three screenplays. I'm currently working on a fourth, which is a musical. And um, I've done videos, lots of video major you know, days long photo shoots for companies like Jacuzzi and Avenir Pharmaceuticals in their clean room. So very much a commercial filmmaker. I, this was my very first foray into doing anything like a documentary. Um, the films that I've written as a screenwriter have been feature films. So that's what I'm doing again. But I, this is really, this is my whole bio right here, <laughs> Kathy. Yeah. So it is amazing. You have been working for seven years uh, for this film, um, uh, recording all the activities. Uh, how many hours do you have of uh, shooting material? <laughs> oh, I couldn't. I, cu I couldn't. You know, it's the, 
well, the interviewing was actually the, the easy part. I mean, it was, it was fun. It was, um, I learned so much, but the, and, and none of it was difficult, but what was most time consuming was going through, um, years and years of video of the dances. And I mean, back, we have videos from the eighties and seventies. So, and I didn't know the dances and the music. So I actually had to study those and I ordered books and I read about um, Greek dance and, and the people who were instrumental in FDF in the beginning, um, Alkis Raftis comes to mind. Um, oh God, I'm forgetting. There were so many other people, but that was the most time consuming was just, I ordered off the internet, the different projectors so I could watch the old mini tapes and VHS and all that. So that it was actually quite entertaining to watch. <laughs> and I learned a lot. The first time I went to FDF, I had no idea really what was going on. And by the, the last time I went to FDF, I was actually like, oh, they're good dancers and they're not so much. <laughs> so I knew the, the dances, but it, it was really an education. And, you know, I wish I, Peter would like to write a book about FDF. So hopefully we'll get that going. And I know Christos Papakostas, who's an academic in, in Athens is working on a book about FDF and, and we'd like to help him too. So we certainly have a, a lot of, uh, between all the people that have been involved in FDF, the Greeks, especially the um, mm. directors, instructors have such a wealth of information that it would just be wonderful if we could also compile that in a book. Yes, thank you. Um, Zoe, <laughs> I come Yes. To yeah, uh, you participate um, the last years in our festivals with uh, your films, uh, yes. either as a producer, director, or an actress. So, uh, we have two films of yours in the festival, one that you directed and one that uh, you are acting. Yes. Uh, yeah. But I would like uh, to, to talk about your film, Roots. Yes. Well, you know, basically I was in uh, New York City working on my first feature film since last uh, September. And uh, we were, you know, in a particular stage of the film. And that's when the pandemic broke out, so-called broke out. And everything got pretty much paralyzed. And I was, I found myself in an apartment in New York City all alone, you know, for months and months. And I was trying to figure out what is the message in this for me, you know, because I was not able to continue what I was uh, working on uh, previously. And I just, I really wanted to express myself somehow creatively. I felt like otherwise I'm gonna be suffocated if I have no way of, um, you know, um, putting my thoughts into some kind of form, I don't know, I'm gonna blow up or I'm gonna, <laughs> it, was just, it was just very difficult to bear, you know, and I, I felt I had to do something. So I was thinking, what, am, what can I do in, a, in an apartment? It was complete shut down. Um, I had a camera, but, you know, I was all alone. So I decided that, I, I'm going to portray my situation being in the apartment all alone. <laughs> and I'm just going to use a phone, which is much easier to operate all by myself. You know, I could just put it on a tripod. I could, you know, it's, it's much easier. So that's what I did. And um, I, I wanted to uh, express what's going through, you know, those hours and days and, 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 what is the process? What's happening when someone is um, completely put in, uh, put under different circumstances, and the regular things are taken away? And uh, I found that I was kind of, I guess it's normal, turn in 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 perspective, introspective into myself. I was thinking about a lot about my life, and um, uh, basically, I found that I was a lot with my phone because my only connection to the world was my phone. So since I was dealing so much with my phone, I found a bunch of old family photos 
in my, um, you know, in my mm. documents. And that somehow brought particular feelings out, you know, like just, I went back to the past and relieved a lot of experience that experiences that I didn't kind of touch for a long time. And under these circumstances, being, being all alone, you know, that mm. had a very different meaning. And um, so I, I actually shot a lot, you know, I, I figured out, you know, I, I experimented where should I put the camera, the phone, uh, how, how should I compose in that small apartment uh, to make it interesting, make it varied. And um, so it's a lot of footage. I cut it all together and uh, I picked a song. I'm, you know, I love music, Petra, you know that. Uh, um, uh, Patty and Svetlana may not, <laughs> you know, I, I do love music and I picked a song for the film because I thought that uh, almost like a poem, you know, the music could be a nice narrative. So I picked uh, Leonard Cohen, Dance Me to the End of Love. I love that song because because he goes uh, into memories and talking about the, um, he's talking about the, um, 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 about life, how um, how time is dealing with life, how things are disappearing with time, you know, the, the fragile uh, element of um, everything is constantly changing. So I picked the song exactly because I was showing myself dealing with finding those family photos and the memories and being all alone in that apartment. So basically that's the film that... Um, kind of, uh, you know, expresses that experience in that moment in time and, and place. And, and I just wanted to encapsulate that, you know, I didn't want this moment to pass. I wanted to give it a significance. I wanted to somehow, you know, um, make a statement about it. And seeking for love and memories. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, oh yes, but I, what I, I have, um, what I, I, I feel about mm -hmm. the women um, yeah. artists during the pandemic, uh, the majority were very productive, either very, uh, they were in education or uh, they were creating things uh, or they were writing, so they were very productive. <laughs> Um, of course, uh, knowing uh, our, ourselves also to be more with ourselves and uh, try to be friends uh, forever. <laughs> um, also, you work on a feature film. I, I've yes. seen some photos uh, from yes. in New York that uh, from the shooting. Uh, yes, <clears throat> you know, I I picked. Um... I picked a very American subject and I thought it's, it's a great challenge because I'm European. <laughs> so, and you are a woman also. Yes. Tell us yes. about the subject. <laughs> yeah, the subject is uh, uh, about a kickbox world champion who started in gangs. He was a very troubled kid and he was in prison. And while he was in prison, he was uh, exposed to boxing and boxing itself. Uh, started to change his life to the to the degree that eventually he became a world champion and he held his wow. title for seven years and not only that after that he felt like he he it wasn't enough just to be that successful he wanted to give back he wanted to pay forward and uh, now he's saving kids out of gangs kids just like he was years ago and, and he has a fantastic humanitarian mission to, to um, train kids, uh, troubled kids um, for free, uh, you know, exchange the troubled gang lifestyle to training with him. Uh, and, and he's also helping those kids to get all kinds of skills to get back into society. So he's planning to have a whole chain of uh, youth centers around the world. You know, he started, he, he did one in, in Amsterdam and in one in uh, Spain, in, I think, in Madrid. And um, so basically I chose him and 
I think is a very inspiring uh, journey, a very inspiring character. It shows that doesn't matter how, um, uh, how bad is your situation, one can start from very uh, troubled and confusing background. And that doesn't mean that they have to be, you know, have, it doesn't mean that it has to be a lost life. It doesn't mean that there is no way out of that. I want to show that example. I know that there are many examples, but he is one. And he was able to rise above his own ego. So he, it wasn't enough for him just, quote unquote, to become successful. He wants to help. He's able to care about others. It's, it's another level of, uh, you know, being generous and being, being um, overcoming uh, their own obstacles. I think it's another level when someone can actually think outside of themselves, a little bit larger than life. And, and I wanted to show that example. And it's, of course, it's a great opportunity, you know, to talk about uh, the gang problem in America, uh, the political background, the economy, um, all kinds of, um, you know, historical flashback and flash forward. You know, because obviously I would like to kind of suggest solutions and uh, and I, I would like to inspire uh, with this film and I envision to have original music. I think it's um, kind of cool to have a, for, a, for a film to have original music. So I'm imagining a whole soundtrack, you know, like obviously have a title song that mm -hmm. the film called Project Mumbo Kid. So that mm -hmm. would be a mm -hmm. title song, obviously, but there, there would be other songs that in the film obviously wouldn't be mm -hmm. in full, just the little pieces, but we could also produce a full soundtrack coming with the film. And uh, who is going to compose the score? Well, I'm still searching for mm -hmm. uh, artists. I could go two ways. I'm trying to approach some stars. Still, I'm in the process. Um, I thought you, why, why not you? You can compose also. I don't know. I mean, the, the style is, you know, um, 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 hip hop, um, uh, rap. I'm, I'm not really uh, well versed in that, in that <laughs> style. And also Latin, contemporary Latin, two different kinds of styles. I would like, you know, type of Mark Antony, a Mark Anthony type of musical world and the performer would be ideal. Mark Anthony, Maluma, or or uh, really, really um, um, socially committed, uh, enlightened rapper. So either a star. If mm -hmm. I cannot get a star, I'm uh, thinking about discovering a, a brand new talent, someone who's who okay. who's done a lot of things already but didn't break through yet. So, because, because they could, you know, we could put their face together with the film. So that film could be actually a great venue for them. Um, you know, I have some secret, okay. not so secret plans. And now people, because... more people are listening. So maybe <laughs> we have some offers, who knows? Yes, yes, okay. yes. So I, I'm still open about the music. Okay. Do you have the casting already? You have the cast. Uh, I have I have a lot of people. You know, I shot like with people like Maurice Dubois, the CBS uh, a, a, a TV uh, host, and um, Alan Cumming is already. We are in the talks with him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we we interviewing some famous people who are connected to Mo. Mo is the the boxer. Mm -hmm. Mumbo Kid. He's training them, or they they were yeah. somehow part of his life. Uh, Carlos Leon, Madonna's ex, and also it's a it's a big dream, but I'm hoping that I kind of believe that it's going to happen. Um, Queen Latifah was also a part of Mo's past because her mother was Mo's uh, elementary school teacher. Okay, uh, when, <laughs> so I, I am I am in the process of reaching out to Queen Latifah. So we would yeah. like to commemorate her mom in that in those stories and also Queen Latifah grew up together you know mm -hmm. they were kind of from exactly the same neighborhood uh, so she knows a lot about that that you know uh, uh, walk of life that life experience 
And, you know, Queen Latifah has a, a, a full, um, you know, she's managing artists. So mm -hmm. that would be an amazing dream if she would be, I don't know, inspired by our story. And uh, it's, it's a little bit her story mm -hmm. as well. And she could help us. But as I said, I'm still open because uh, I just, I, I want real talent. I want, you know, I'm not um, just looking for names or uh, I, I really want something that, mm -hmm. I think matches the film, you know? Okay, good luck. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate well, look, it. Thank forward. you. <laughs> Thank, so, you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Svetlana, uh, we had a nice talk also yesterday about your film and uh, this inspiring uh, monk, uh, Serbian monk. Uh, and I have some more questions uh, about you. Maybe you told us yesterday, how long uh, you, you are working on this documentary? It's 40 minutes. Yeah, well, it was, um, um, well, uh, one full day in New York City, 6th of June, 2018, and uh, almost two days at the monastery in uh, Serbia. Uh, the monastery where the monk is, a monastery Ribnica. So um, from that first day in New York, uh, the part where uh, Father Arseny gives a lecture at the Greek Orthodox Church, I didn't want to take any of that footage because I realized that there were a lot of uh, footages like that from different churches around the world where he preaches and uh, uh, give lectures uh, because uh, Father Arseny was, um, an avant-garde artist. He was someone who had had a very um, turbulent um, uh, life before he became a monk. He was dealing with drugs. He was dealing with uh, many destructive uh, elements in his life. And he's openly talking about that. So he gives um, an impression of someone who really knows um, the subject for the young people, it's very important. So that part I took out because there are so many videos on YouTube uh, where he really just talks about that. I wanted to get close intimate to his uh, uh, situation right now and uh, have him express his um, confessions. Uh, yeah, but the, filming him in uh, New York narrating about his life, we, 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 had, we take a lot of information from him. Um, what is uh, your goal with this uh, film? Basically, um, he, he, he was an artist, right? And um, for me, I really focused on seven stories about artists. I needed to have seven, that's a very magical number for me. There are no more than seven days in a week. There are no more day, uh, uh, years in Saturn uh, transmission than seven. Seven is a good and solid number. And if I was trying to break it uh, more into number eight, and then I, I, lose, uh, I lose the importance of uh, looking at the process of creativity. And he was just, you know, I started with the LGBT uh, team in... Um, um, in, in Berlin, where I started my opus of seven stories. I have all sorts of people that I work with. I had all sorts of artists that I focused on their process of creativity, but I didn't have a monk and I didn't have a, why I say monk, I didn't look for it, but he was an artist who is still an artist and a monk. And so yet I have a, I have a perfect combination of someone who deals with spirituality in a deep, profound level. And uh, I look from it from a very large distance. I had to, because I know the guy, I know him from the past. I haven't seen him in 28 years, but it's, the, it's the, still the same person. Yet his aura, his way of being is totally transformed. And mm -hmm. I was influenced by him. Yeah. I was very much influenced by him. I started to read a lot of things uh, that I did not know before and uh, mm -hmm. tried to figure out uh, the lives of the saints and the people. You know, I, I got very intrigued. I mean, I always liked spirituality and I always practiced different types of spirituality from Buddhism, Zen, all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, we feel that uh, we want to learn more about him. 
and uh, the editing is very sharp. Uh, for instance, you have a very nice uh, scenes with a chorus, and it's so little. We would like to <laughs> to hear more. Uh, I don't know. I, I I have the feeling that I uh, would like to develop more this story. It's I, I do too. You know, I was uh, I was a little bit limited uh, in. I will never do co-production ever again because when I work in co-production situation, which this happened, then you have a limited amount of time that you can use in the uh, in a, in the editing room. Everything was very very uh, different than the style that I have. I, I'm very free with my projects. And here I have had, had a little bit of nervous situation with the people that I work with, although they are sweet, but <laughs> there are limitations. And mm -hmm. I understand, and I wish, I mean, he wrote a book and I'm reading this book, the second, third book, I don't know, about his life in New York. And I, I called him up the other day and I said, I would really like to make a film about this. Bef for all these steps that were happening to yes. yeah. amazing. I mean, yeah. this is just truly one wonderful feature film. And he said, maybe, maybe, why not? He's so open, he would, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's a big project. It's beautiful. Yeah. We have this feeling, it's not only me, I heard also from other people that uh, they would like to have more. Father are saying. I'll try, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Even this was very difficult. You see, there are very strong rules, for example, for him um, under the Orthodox, uh, you know, guidance. Uh, he couldn't come. I mean, you know, I won't go into details of that. So yeah. I wish uh, yeah. it was longer. Mm -hmm. And it might happen, you know, I, but I would really yeah. rather focus on a feature film with him because of what he went through. Yeah, and also maybe you can analyze with him some philosophical issues. Who knows? And to to, sp to spread it, to open it up through him. In any case, um, Patty, you have already two screenplays uh, ready uh, for filming. They are fiction uh, films. What uh, yeah. what the story is about of your screenplays? Um, well, the first one it was actually optioned. I'm so proud of that <laughs> years ago. But it's a it's a mystery about a um, a Navy pilot who is lost at sea on on his plane. He and uh, they go overboard, and he's also a spy. So it's about his wife and their relationship. And then there there's a mystery, of course. And the second one that I wrote is um, a comedy, and I really love writing comedy. So those, those two are finished. The second one, not as fully realized as the first. I, I don't think I really committed to the beginning, middle and end of it. If you know it, like the plots week, basically. So um, recently since the shutdown, my work hasn't slowed down all that much, but I've just felt, I, you know, this need to do something more. And my brother actually has always wanted to um, do a Broadway play to stage one. And he's also very involved in, um, with musicians, he loves British music, Brit British folk songs and just contemporary music as well. So this kind of roundabout way, but um, we ended up talking and so I'm writing, a, it's a children's story a screenplay that involves tarot characters, which is kind of different. And I'm also writing lyrics, which is just wonderful. And our songwriter is Boo Hewardine. He's a pretty well known in the UK, singer songwriter. And so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work as everybody knows writing a screenplay, but it's, um, it's coming along pretty well. We're excited about it. Okay, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the other one, the second one? Um, the second one was the comedy that, and oh. it was, it was just, it's about a, a corporate couple and there's all these hijinks going on in the office and it, I'm not very happy about that one, but okay. at least I completed it. I was in a screenwriting workshop for about three or four years with um, a woman in Carol Roper. 
who had a career in Hollywood in screenwriting. So that's where I really got my feet wet in, in screenwriting. Otherwise it's been, you know, commercial writing, marketing writing for 25 years. Yes. Um, yes. You, you, all, all, your, all your life you have been in San Diego, Patti? You are born? No, I've, I've been here for, um, since the 80s, but I was actually born in Kansas right in the middle of the country. <laughs> and my dad was in um, corporate marketing. So we moved around quite a bit. There were seven, I have six siblings. And my parents, my brother reminded me of this the other day, uh, moved, lived in 40 different houses, if you can imagine that. So we <laughs> pick up, he would get transferred as he's climbing the corporate ladder. So They ended up in, in uh, New Jersey when my dad worked in Manhattan for like the last 20 years and I was in college by then, but I've lived pretty much all over the Midwest and went to the University of Delaware, graduated from there. And then I've been in San Diego. It feels like I'm from San Diego. Most of us here are transplants, so. Yes. Um, Joy, you, you are, um, your origin is from many, Not many. Well, no, yes, I mean, areas. yes. You tra uh, travel a lot. Tell us yes. about your life. <laughs> yes, well, you know, uh, I, I was born in Hungary and my father was Greek and my mother was Hungarian. And, uh, you know, it uh, um, it's becoming more and more important for me to to learn about my other roots, which is, you know, the Hungarian is obvious because I was born in Hungary, but the other, which is the Greek, is very becoming more and more important every day. So as I'm kind of, as time goes forward, I don't know, I become more and more curious about the culture and I am, that's why I'm so excited to be uh, part of your festival in Cyprus and also here for several times now because I have the chance to meet uh, people who are partially Greek or have a passion yes. for the Greek culture. And, uh, you know, it's just, just uh, amazing. And it's, it's very important for me. But of course, I, I went to America when I was 26 years old and I started anew. And um, it's an exciting journey. I'm based in New York. And uh, I'm not, now in the past seven, eight years, I'm going back and forth, which is a very strange lifestyle because <clears throat> usually I think it's better for a person to put down, you know, <laughs> the foot somewhere, but it just happened this way. You know, my, my, my parents got sick and of course I'm not gonna leave my parents. So I, I went and helped and I was part of their very last phase of their lives. Uh, thankfully, I had the chance, uh, but I always had to go back to America and New York to keep some projects going. Yes. And I didn't want all that, you know, achieved contacts and the good, yes. good relationships disappear. You know, it's very mm -hmm. easy to, you know, everyone is replaceable, mm -hmm. especially in, uh, in New York, such a high fever town. And so your so father is, was an artist, though. Yes. My father was a ceramic artist and a graphic artist and my mother was a painter. So since they passed away, I'm overseeing their artworks and the, the whole legacy. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot for their art to be seen more and more places and recognized. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work, but it's very beautiful. And I think eventually I might do something and I just want to have the, the right angle to do something about their art and about yeah, their life. I, I, think, I think you should. Yesterday we had my wild heart with Lily Vakili. I don't know if uh, you watched. Uh, I did not see that one. I was okay. working yesterday, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, made a documentary about uh, her father. He was an artist. Really? Um, yes. And uh, I would like also to mention that uh, through Greeks, Uh, also in Australia, you are connected in Australia with them, and uh, you were absolutely. You said you know, I met. Believe me, 
Uh, Petra, I met Nikita in Cannes, believe it or not. I was so ecstatic. We were part mm -hmm. of one program and there were like a whole group of Greeks from Australia. I, I could not believe my eyes and they were so wonderful. And, and we ended up making a film, Dream of a Shadow, which we showed at your festival. And World premiere and uh, Greek came, Greeks came from Australia party to Greece and oh, to no. Nafpilo. To and, see and, and it, their world premiere and at Nafplio, we don't, there is no multiplex. We did the screenings in an old mosque. So oh, it was something, it was a story. So beautiful. Uh, it was a monument. But the producer <laughs> thought that it will go to a big screen. So what is this here? <laughs> <laughs> and it was a rainy day also. Yeah, but. It was wonderful. And it was, you know, that, that power of the people. diaspora uh, that, that, you know, I, and I thought it was a very important subject, especially for us who are kind of uh, all over the world, but have a little part of ho our heart in Greece. You know, the, 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 the function and the, the possibilities of the diaspora, the Greek diaspora, how can they uh, connect and, and somehow elevate and help uh, the homeland, so called, uh, you know, Greece. Yeah. So this was about, uh, yeah, for, for the Greek diaspora. Australians. Yeah, Greek yes. diaspora in Australia. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm <laughs> what would you like to share with us about Serbian diaspora and the connection with Greece? My auntie, my auntie, I have uh, an auntie in Houston. She lives in Houston, Texas. She's uh, the sister of my mother. And uh, she says about the Serbians, we are brothers. And sisters. Yes, <laughs> yes we are brothers. We, we talk, we, are, we have the same religion. We think the same. Uh, so and she's very conservative. She's from Kalamata, <laughs> you know? And uh, I remember I had the Serbian friends and I say, oh, Petra, Serbian, our Serbian people are brothers, our family to us. Mm, yeah. so what is your uh, uh, of, of feeling? You know, uh, uh, my husband is an artist and he's a Brazilian sculptor, very well known around the world. And, and he had uh, an invitation um, to, to come to uh, Greece, to Hydra, because uh, one of his monumental pieces was shown um, at the private collection, the gallery of Pauline Carpides. And uh, she was one of his, mo and still is one of the most important collectors around the world. And so our child was four and a half years old. We step our foot in Hydra and I said, I feel home. <laughs> and he said, what are you talking about? I said, I just feel at home. And uh, very soon, uh, we were supposed to stay just a week. That's what our uh, arrangement was with a uh, with uh, collector. But we ended up staying a month and a half. And the next summer, we were back in the same place. And uh, we bought a small house. It's a fisherman's oh. house. Uh, but we managed to, you know, renovate the house. Uh, it's close to the Leonard Cohen's uh, house. Um, and so we bought, um, after 12 years of waiting, uh, also another property that we need to renovate. Um, everybody says, you are crazy. You can buy a really nice house uh, in Peloponnese or whatever. Why are you doing this? Why? Because exactly, we had found our family in Greece and uh, they called me Fotini. I'm not Svetlana. <laughs> it is. And, Very yeah. nice. Signy yeah. means signy. Yes, it's, it's the brilliant. same. For the me, and we, is light. Yeah. Yes, and, and we 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 uh, we go to Greece to, uh, you know, to start breathing again. Whenever we are tired, in the middle of the winter, we went there almost the last year, and it was a lockdown, and I couldn't be happier because when I'm there, um, there are so many things. Everything inspires us. Saint Clair is a sculptor, so he has a studio also outside of. Athens in Halkida, where he makes bronze pieces for his shows around the world. And, and um, um, he had a show, oh, he had a gal, I'm sorry, a studio in China for many years. But when he discovered that he could work in Greece, 
he just uh, yeah because uh, he um he also speaks greek now very well my husband he speaks several languages he studies greek he's completely devoted because greek mythology does speak to him as a sculptor and to me as a writer and for the theater because i come from the theater world all the greek dramas that we can see in epidauro during the summer i must go so we have organized transport from hydra it's a a phenomenal adventure because it lasts almost seven hours to get him to come back because we are on the island and we have to take a boat and we have to take a bus and but it's wonderful because I, i live on that the whole year i think about it and then i read everything that you know it's from the past that he resonates to me also in this modern uh, Greek uh, history that is similar to ours, to Serbia. Yeah. yeah. Patti, have you ever visited Greece? I have not. And that that's just a dream for me. When um, this, uh, Bridges is our first film festival in Greece. And it's just so unfortunate that it's at this time because we would definitely be there. I would be there. And also that was going to be my excuse to sort of travel around and, and finally see Greece. I, I feel like I've been there in my heart. Yeah, but next year. Next year. You, next year. Yes, we, we will do special screenings for the films from this year. Too. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, ladies, uh, being with us uh, today with inspiring uh, stories, documenting in your films, your uh, inspiring uh, and promising uh, Uh, plans for the future and uh, I'm looking forward to meet you again so stay Thank safe so healthy and be inspired Petra just one Thank question you. can you get in touch with Chris about the issue because yes, right uh, now after we finish yes because he needs to uh, yes nice to meet you all and good luck <laughs> pleasure <laughs> pleasure meeting you all and I hope to stay in touch Thank you oh, absolutely Thank you bye bye Thank bye you, bye Petra. Bye. Thank you, Patty. Thank, Thank you, Zoe. You. And Zoe means life. This. Yes, yes. I'm so this. proud of it. <laughs> Thank you. Means a Beautiful. lot. Thank you.